This is Demetria Irwin from MadamNoir.com. We got to get behind the scenes with MSNBC's recent panel discussion called A Stronger America, The Black Agenda, hosted by journalist Ed Schultz and featuring a host of panelists, including Al Sharpton, Michael Eric Dyson, and Dr. Cornell West. First up, Al Sharpton tells us why it's important for African Americans to pay particular attention to politics at this time. You must look at the fact that we look at it differently because we are disproportionately impacted. It's like how a chicken and a pig looks at a, 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 a ham and bacon, a egg and bacon sandwich. One loses an egg, the other loses a leg. We lose the leg in the budget cuts. Others contribute an egg. So we look at this a whole lot more personally. Ladies also represented on the Black Agenda panel. Journalist Karen Hunter told the audience why Dr. King would be on the side of unions today. If we go back to Dr. King's mission, which was for poor people on, on his way out, unfortunately, um, we're, we're talking today about the black agenda. And, and this, what, what Mark just pointed out, was about workers. Dr. King was fighting for poor people. And I think more than us talking about black people today, we should be talking about those people who Dr. King died for. Um, of which we, you know, as blacks, are so diverse and so spread out. And there's Oprah Winfrey, and we got Nina Le Nene Leakes. We have very, very rich people, and we have black folks in, in jail. But this issue should be about what you're saying just, just now, about the poor people, about the workers, and Dr. King died for that, and that's what the discussion should be around. But Throughout the panel discussion, Mara Schiavo Campo shared sobering statistics about African Americans today. But first, let's get the latest information on where we stand on education from NBC News correspondent Mara Schiavacampo. Mara? Well, Ed, when it comes to education, the headline is that racial inequalities start young and persist through life. Widely considered a national crisis, nothing illustrates the problem more strongly than the stark statistics. When it comes to, the, to standardized tests, the average black child scores below 75 percent of white children. In 2009, only 12 percent of black male students performed at or above proficiency levels in national fourth grade reading tests, compared to 38 percent of white males nationwide. One report found only 47 percent of black males graduated from high school in 2008. Now, these problems with education ultimately lead to problems in employment. It's projected that 70 percent of black adults won't have the required education for a huge chunk of new jobs that will be created in the next few years. And then there's the question of historically black colleges and universities. Does their tradition of excellence and cultural importance reverse these awful trends? Well, unfortunately, in many ways, the answer seems to be no. Mara, who is also a fan of MadamNoir.com, sat down with us to chit-chat about her personal life and how she balances career and family. This is Demetria Irwin from MadamNoir.com, and we are here with the wonderful and fabulous Mara Schiavacampo. How are you? Hello to the equally wonderful and fabulous. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's going to be a great interview. Yeah. <laughs> so MadamNoir.com um, is all about black women, yes. lifestyle, career, children, the whole nine. Yes. Um, so one thing that our readers always talk about a lot is balancing career and family and having a life and friends and mm -hmm. you having this wonderful job that you have as a journalist here. How do you balance all of that? I think the idea of balance is a myth. I don't think anybody feels like, ah, I have achieved it. I have, you know, the perfect mix of life and family and work and it's always a work in progress and it ebbs and flows. Sometimes I'm in a really family oriented mode where I'm seeing my family a lot. I'm spending a lot of time with my husband. We're traveling and then sometimes it's work, work, work and unfortunately that gets pushed to the back burner so it just kind of depends we do the best we can nothing makes me happier than spending time with my loved ones but a close second is my work which makes me very very happy so i try to do the things that i care about that i'm passionate about and not neglect anything but if i said i was perfect at it i'd be lying right <laughs> <laughs> so in that and you mentioned your husband obviously the fabulous ring thank good you job, he did good honey. he did good, good job. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the hubby, you have the career, like how did that all come together? Again, a total accident for me. You know, I, I was not looking to settle down. I, my husband and I knew each other a long time. We were friends. We just started dating one weekend, totally out of the blue, and we've been together ever since. So that was a complete accident. But what I will say is, because I see this with a lot of my girlfriends who are single, and I was just speaking to someone who said, well, I want to be married, but I don't want to be married until you know later, so when do I start working on that? I think women have to approach their relationships in the same way they approach their career. If you want to be married, you have to pursue that, because the chances of it happening by accident 
I don't think are that great. So if that's a priority for you, I think you have to make it a priority for you. You have to go out, you have to kiss a lot of frogs, you got to tell people you want to be fixed up, you got to do online dating. I'm a big fan of all of that. So I think people right. need to commit as much to relationships as they do to their career and do it as strategic. Because if you are just kind of sitting back, you're not going to meet your husband on the couch, right? right? You got to go out, you got to try to, to find him. So that's that's my advice for people in terms of, of managing all of that. Okay, but it happened a little differently for you, though. It did, but yeah. you know, the thing is, I mean, I was 22 when I started dating my husband, so I wasn't looking for a serious relationship. But if today, if I was still single, I would want a relationship because I'm 31, you know, I hope to have children, so I realize biology is not going to wait for me forever, you know, the clock is ticking. So if I were single right now, I would be treating my search for a husband as I treat my career. That's interesting because you said you met your husband and started dating him at 22, which obviously you weren't full on full throttle career at right. that point. So right. you've been together throughout the progression of your career. Yes. Um, and now at just 31 years old, as you mentioned, nightly news anchor. I mean, that's that's huge. Right. How did you how did you get into that? It, uh, my life has been a series of accidents. To say that I planned any of it or was that smart is, is it would be a lie. So I followed my passions and my interests. I really wanted to travel. I really wanted to report. I wanted to do certain kinds of stories and I was committed to that. That led me to NBC News. So I feel like if you follow the things that you're really passionate about, that you're genuine and, and authentic in your life and the way you live your life, you will always end up in a good place. If you're always trying to think strategically and be an opportunist and you're only concerned about kind of the fringe elements of life, I don't think you'll end up where you want to be. But if you focus on what inspires you, what genuinely gets you out of bed in the morning, you're going to be fine. And who inspired you? Who are your inspirations? So many people, too many to count. I mean, if we're talking about, let me think of some people that, well, professionally, it's much easier for me to say. I mean, I'm inspired by so many of my colleagues at NBC News. Richard Engel, I think, is the best of the best. He's terrific. Ann Curry, talented and lovely and such a warm-hearted person. Brian Williams, the best of the best. Andrea Mitchell, I mean, I'm like a rookie on the Yankees here. I just look up to everybody that I work with. And what is your exact career advice, specifically for women who are interested in media and being on camera you don't see a lot of women of color on camera in this right way. right no. what, what I find is that and this is it's a little frustrating for me I meet a lot of people young women who want to be on TV and I think the desire to be on TV is not going to take you very far because it's too grueling it's too difficult it's too demanding it's too taxing to sustain you if you just want the fun stuff that's like 5% of the job 95% is waking up at 2 in the morning being in the middle of nowhere staying in in a crappy hotel, doing a lot of research, doing a lot of writing, missing out on social events, missing out on things that are important to your family, that's the job. And so if you just want to be on TV, that's not going to get you through all that other stuff. So I always go back to really think about what inspires you because the best job you can have is one that doesn't feel like work. Um, so you've gotten so far already at just 31 years. I keep saying that because that's just so awesome to me. Thank you. Um, what are your ultimate career goals? You know, people ask me that all the time. And one of my favorite sayings is we make plans and God laughs. So I don't plan my life. I think about what interests me. Like for me, it's really just, you know, project to project, moment to moment. What things are appealing to me, what's exciting and new and fresh, and those are the things that I'm chasing. So personally, I would love a family at some point. I don't know if that point is now, but I do certainly want to have children, so I hope that's where my life is going. Um, and professionally, I just want to keep working on things that inspire me and reach as many people as possible. Now, other than that, I don't think about it too much, because I know whatever I plan, God has something else completely different planned, so I don't even want to frustrate myself. I'm just going to go with his path, because that's what happens anyway. Well, I think that's a good way to live life. Um, and we thank you very much for stopping and by and talking to you. Me. And I, I love what you guys are doing. I'm a big supporter of the site, and I wish you continued success. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, this is Mara Schiavocampo with NBC News. You're at madamnoir.com. And make sure you stay here and you come back and you check in as often as possible because there's always something fabulous to see.